welcome back students we were seeing the digestion in the humans so let's continue topic digestion then takes place in the small intestine after entering through duodenum through the duodenum and in small intestine small intestine is approximately 3 meter long and unlike the stomach it also contains numerous ridges and furrows in addition there are numerous projections called as villi that function to increase the surface area of intestine so mostly what happens the small intestine has various villi due to or you can say the coils which are held together by the connective tissue which is also called as mesenteries supporting the various blood vessels as you can see each will uh, villus has a blood vessels and a lacteal which is called as lymph vessel so these uh, mesenteries support the blood vessels lymph vessels and the nerves again small intestine is divided into duodenum jejunum and ileum peptidases and maltases are embedded within the plasma membrane of the microvilli as you can see in the picture this is the wall of small intestine and these are the villi we can see you can see the projections this are this portion is called as lacteal these are the mesh of the blood capillaries this is the artery this is vein and this is called as this portion is called as crypt now absorption is the main function of the small intestine absorption is a main important function of small intestine active transport moves glucose and amino acids into the intestinal cells and then out where they are picked up by the capillary so these projections are mainly responsible for the absorption of the food now in small intestine the villi increase the area of absorption and the glucose and fructose are absorbed into the blood vessels they are absorbed by you can say the osmosis or uh, by the diffusion and the active absorption the amino acids are absorbed by the blood vessels fatty acids and glycerol are absorbed by the lymph cap capillaries or you can say the lacteals right now glucose and fatty acids are produced during the digestion enter the villi and through diffusion and they assemble into fat by the triglycerides next comes the large intestine large intestine is also called as the colon it receives almost 10 liters of the water per day and 1.5 liters from the food and 8.5 liters from the secretion into the gut that means 95% water is absorbed in the large intestine large intestine you know is about 1.5 meter long and it can be divided into mainly the colon and the rectum the large intestine also absorbs the sodium and other ions and it also secretes other metallic ions into the waste if water is not absorbed diarrhea can result causing the dehydration and the iron loss it absorbs mainly vitamin k produced by the colon bacteria and which is the main colon bacteria produced uh, which is present in the large intestine it is e coli that is escherichia coli now this uh, large intestine also contains the descending colon as you can see here it also contains a descending colon the descending colon is a part of the colon from the splenic flexure to the beginning of the sigmoid colon as you can see to the beginning of the sigmoid colon this is this is the one next comes the sigmoid colon the sigmoid colon is part of the large intestine after the descending colon and before the rectum this is your rectum and before this this is your sigmoid colon the name sigmoid means s shape it appears to be like s shape as you can see here now next comes the last part that is rectum the rectum opens to the outside op uh, the opening called as anus which is guarded by the sphincter and it moves in the undigested matter outside the body with the help of the process of defecation or ejection so rectum is the last part of the colon it holds the stool prior to the defecation can see here and through this anus the food is excreted out of the body so students in this session we have seen 
the digestion process from the various parts of the organ in our body that, that means a specific digestive system is present in our body thank you